ShireSociety.com. There's a Facebook post by a New Hampshire Liberty activist named Sarah Chamberlain, and it sort of made me feel guilty. Technically, I disagree with it, but I think she's making an interesting point. Referring to New Hampshire's top newspaper, she says, quote, or writes, quote, Oh, well, before I quote, I should correct myself. She's not really talking about just the union leader, uh, but about more than that. She says, quote, NH reporters quit reporting the names and showing the faces of people who commit petty crimes. I don't need to be warned of the guy who threw a remote control and damaged his friend's television in a moment of video game rage. I don't care about the teenage girl who smacked a family member. Please do not give me the name, picture, and the address of the local woman arrested on suspicion of prostitution. It's bad enough these people were arrested in the first place. The smear campaigns are disgraceful. There are real stories to report. Be better. Unquote. Well, technically, I think Chamberlain may be asking a little too much. Information probably shouldn't be suppressed maybe not even self-censored, but she's still got her finger on the pulse of something that is kind of a problem, and that is the fact that the media tends to, well, they have a real heart for going after the little guy. You know, they'll, they'll jump over tall burglars in a single bound, but a banker? A Federal Reserve official? In many cases, even politicians get awfully gentle treatment in, 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 uh, in comparison. And there's often this feeling that I have that the mainstream press is just, they're just issuing press releases for the police department, which goes out there and tries to find people that are worse than them to make themselves look better. I mean, it feels that way. I know the police actually tend to, they, they wind up arresting what's in front of them, but many of these crime reports just feel like a distraction. You know, if a TV station wanted to, I mean, when I was in mainstream press television, we were always scrambling to find some kind of halfway interesting story, and oftentimes we were doing this really boring stuff. And, you know, if we had just said to ourselves each morning, well, what government meetings are going on today, uh, or tomorrow, or the next day, and uh, can we be there, you know, 45 minutes before the meeting starts? And just ambush interview every politician that walks in about whatever we feel like asking them about. Oh my gosh, people would have loved that. Viewers would have loved it and there would have been plenty of content. But no, we had to spend all of our time going after pictures of signs and street corners because an assault happened there last night that the police told us about. At one station, we had to get approval before doing an ambush interview. And probably the most interesting piece of video I ever shot uh, as a TV news photographer never even aired because, well, it was a confrontation. Someone confronted us from, for being on their property after the government had seized it. It was like a, a battery recycling plant that was you know, supposedly polluting. That would have been really interesting video. No one ever saw it except us. Sometimes things just look the way they look, and when you go somewhere, what you see, well, the most interesting thing you see is the thing you should share. But that's not the way the mainstream press works. It's all about scripts and following some sort of lead or report from earlier. And gutting the little man. Because he can't effectively fight back. He can't yank your FCC license. The, the TV stations and the radio stations are all government licensed in the United States, basically. Free press, my ass. So ultimately, probably both sets of things should be reported. The bad things that little people do, even maybe little bad things, and the bad things that big important people do, especially those in authority. Unfortunately, after all these years of doing this, going to government meetings, standing outside, ambush interviewing all the politicians I can, I don't really see anyone else to speak of doing it regularly. In New Hampshire, anyway. And, you know, in one sense, that's nice. It means there's no competition for me. But mostly, it's sad because I know that when I'm done doing it, or dead or whatever, it may not get done anymore. Oh, well. At least it's nice to see someone has some ideas in New Hampshire on how the media could do better. The old world is collapsing, 
and it's going to take its slave driver governments with it. But what will rise up in their place? In New Hampshire, the Shire Society has a plan, a thriving web forum, and a history of action. He didn't take long to come up with a plan. You can sign up right now at ShireSociety.com.